the city is the city that never sleeps and it's about eight million people that live here and they go where they go they work where they work and they live where they live and we can't we can't really explain all the how of, of God's creation I mean like it, I mean, we, we can recognize it we see it but but how amazing is God and then the metaphysical reality that we are created for eternity explain that <laughs> science figure that one out I guess they did you know um, Einstein uh, said that there must be eternal life because matter cannot be destroyed it, it changes form so therefore he believed in eternity it was very simple for him why isn't it why isn't it simple for us to know that that our soul is meant for eternity this is amazing you might be thinking I have made so many mistakes father I don't think God's promise is here for me anymore God's promise is still here but we do have to take responsibility for the mess that we've we've created that we've done the damage maybe that we've caused ourselves yeah amen you have to be healed enough to say yes and this is what happens to us we doubt God's promises and this is how we give in to an a counterfeit love this is how people fall for the wrong thing learn what the real thing is and know that God will never take his promise away from you and for some people it means you have to wait because the world hasn't caught up to this love that God has given us but it is always worth the wait Hi, my name is Wojtek. Um, I am from Poland and currently I am um, working as a purchasing agent in construction company. Before I met the Lord, uh, life was terrible actually um, because um, I was just not living with the church, not living my sacraments and, um, and most of the time um, I was just like sinning, you know. Um, I have a period of my time when um, I was in the high school and then like after like at the end of the, of the high school, I was just, you know, like engaged into like, you know, like high school life and it, it, it brought me to alcohol, to drugs, to parties. Um, but the, like the main um, harm that happened to me that I just left the Catholic church because, you know, I have my reasons, things that happened in my life. Um, but it was the main cause that my life just like broke down because I was raised in Catholic family. I was always like taught how to be like, you know, how to pray. My mom was always like um, taking us to the church. But you know, like um, for some circumstances that happened in my personal life, like I was just like slowly like leaving the Catholic church, leaving the Eucharist, leaving down the confession. And this is when, you know, everything what was evil and bad in my life actually happened. bridges, the, the highways in this city are just incredible. And, and to think that, you know, a human mind thought this up and that it works. You look at these skyscrapers and they're like hundreds of floors high and they all have wiring and pipes and everything works. And um, all the more so is the will of God for us all the more so is his plan you know if you uh, to, to know that the Lord uh, has created us um, and has willed us and holds us in existence like all this should speak to our our dignity even if even if for whatever reason family or divorce or whatever you don't feel that that's recognized but God still put it there and it's still there and if we can see this in the city how much more so in the person that's right next to us
What happened in your life where you met the Lord? Oh, that was like the best like day of my life so far. Um, because living without Christ and without church, without sacrament brought me to the point when I was like really broke down. Um, actually, my life broke down, like my exist existence broke down to the point when I was like even thinking about commit suicide because I cut myself being in, um, in a, such a bad position in the life, financial, um, it goes about relationship with my family, relation, everything. And when I met, when I, when I met God, it was like personal experience of, of, of God's love. Um, it happened, um, I remember one night, I, I believe it's gonna be like seven years ago, when um, I spoke to my friend for many, many hours, he was defending the Catholic faith and the truth of, Catholic, of, of the Catholic teaching, and I was against it. And we just have this conversation that lasts like nine hours. Yeah. And, you know, after nine hours, I just got home. Remember, it was like 4 a.m. because we have like, we were just talking over the whole night about, you know, about Christ and everything. Um, and it just happened to me that, you know, I was laying down on my bed and all of a sudden, like, you know, in this darkness, this depression, this failure in my life, this, this feeling that I have no chance to fix my life, to live my life good again, I just experienced God's love. It was like personal encounter with Jesus, with his loving presence, this hope that, that you know, that I felt in my heart, that, that he is, that he loves me. That, that he will guide me to fix my life right now, that nothing is lost, you know? This, this, this light that just came into my heart. It was like a few minutes after that, that I just realized what did I have done with God's love for me. So it was also like another experience that God gave me that like for the 12 years that I was like of the Catholic Church, God was like keep on like showing me my sins through the memories and the grief for the sins that I commit against God's love, that this love was so many times rejected, disrespected, like God, like brought me to, to great like grief, grief and repentance. And I called, I just, I just cried like for the rest of the night and the morning and I just called my friend. And I was like, listen, like, I don't know how to tell you that, but I met Christ, like, like he came into my, like this night and he just touched my heart and I don't want to live my life anymore like this. And I just want to change my life. And, and, you know, because I just want to be close to him. And I say, and I said like, what, what should I do right now? And he was like, what? Like, <laughs> what? Because, you know, like for them, it was like so strange, you know, for me, like talking about Christ and everything, like that I met him. He was like, oh, like, you should actually go to, um, to confession. So for the next four days, I received like enormous grace just to write down the, the sins that I committed. So it was like the letter page front and the back, it was like black from ink because I was just keep on writing down like what I was want to apologize Jesus for. Because I felt this load of the sin that was so heavy for me that I just knew like that there is nothing I can do with it. Like I was like, you know, I was just like, let like somebody to take this off me. But my friend told me that only Jesus can do this because only like, you know, the son of God has authority to forgive sins. So I went like he, he got me to the community that I spent my next year, years with and, um, and he introduced me to this priest. So, you know, I was just having this piece of paper and I was confessing my sins for an hour and a half, straight talking like sin after sin, sin after sin, sins. I don't know, since even the elementary school, like when I was like 13, 14, like God took me all the way back to like reach out to my heart from that moment, you know? So I just confessed my sins and, and I will never like forget this moment when the priest like ra raised his hand and he says, you know, this formula, like, you know, and through the authority of the church, like I forgive you sins. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And I just felt like, Phew! like, you know, this release, you know, this load, like, cause I felt like I have like, like five elephants on my back, you know? And I remember that I stand up and he just looked at me and, you know, I didn't even realize at that moment, like actually what happened, but he was like, welcome back. And he just like said nothing. He just like, you know, give me a hug. And, and ever since like God was just guiding me to this point where I am right now. I can talk from my previous experience because I was engaged twice and um, it, everything was just always falling apart, period. 
because it was built up not on Christ, not on chastity, because, you know, if somebody thinks they can build up like without Christ and or without chastity on sin, it's only like, you know, it's an illusion that you think you're good, but you're not. So I would definitely not be what I am right now, getting married um, if I didn't, you know, got converted beyond the Christ and also be in a community because you cannot be saved solo. There is no such a thing. You have to be in a community, period. Our preparation for marriage is um, definitely through, um, through retreats, um, also through teachings of Corazon Puro, theology of the body, like, you know, teaching how to live like chaste, because it was something that was very difficult for me. And, you know, thanks of prayers to St. Joseph, asking him to like, you know, fix my chest, he brought me to CP. Also through the spiritual direction, through the um, prayer, but like the cherry on the top was to learn empathy. Yeah, so it was, it is still the hardest point of our relationship. And this is what God like really want us to work for because, you know, um, in this like, you know, the whole world is like so stone cold right now that empathy is the key to, to, to you know, to reach out to each other. We had like first contact like um, five years ago when I came to America and I joined the Corazon Puro, but then I came back to um, Poland for, for many years and I totally forgot about my, my, my future wife-to-be. Um, and I, I was really doing good in Poland, like, you know, having um, my own business and, and just living my life, but then just God called me to come back here. And I was like, show me what for, because it took me like six months, like fighting with God because I didn't want to go come back here to America like at all. But then I was like so bothered. I believe by the Holy Spirit, I said, okay, fine. So I'm going to come and see like what's happened. So I came to, um, I came here and I said, God, I, I am here only three weeks. And if you're not going to show me, um, I'm just going to leave. I'm not going to stay in here, you know? So we catch up again and, you know, it was like love, from the first sight. Yeah, so I just knew this, this is what God is calling me to do. And I just come back home. I sell everything what I have. I, I, just, I just left everything and I just came here, yeah. You have to just be healed enough to say yes completely. And maybe that's as completely as you can, but it's still saying yes with all of yourself. The Lord never gives up on us. And this is the love by which He loves us. We need to learn that love from Him in order to be able to distinguish between a love that can't wake to take. I was, I was just directly like after you. It was just too fun, it was just too fun. First things first, um, young man growing up Catholic, and then turning to the shadow world, um, what, what, how, what do we speak into that? How, what do we, what do we say? We, we know that 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 is just such a common experience among young people. They're wounded. They're mm. beat up by the world. Here's my question: though. What are we praying for when we pray for young people? Mm. You know, <clears throat> and um, oftentimes I think in our in our work with guys who have have addictions. Um, some, and you, you, you talk about rock bottom, right? And the concept of rock bottom, I'm gonna hit rock bottom. Sometimes we pray for, we necessarily can't help them not hit rock bottom, but maybe the, the bottom can raise up a little bit. Hmm. You can know, raise maybe, the bottom. Yeah, you may raise the bottom a little bit. So, and not that they have to get hurt or they have to experience pain, or, or you know, ex especially if it's something physical, but it's, what do they need to experience to have this conversion like Wojtek did? They need experience that they're, they're unsatisfied with the world. And they need to experience that what they're looking for in worldly things and in, in, the, in the shadow world, in the partying, um, in, the, in the relationships that are not fulfilling, that they might experience the dissatisfaction of the, with the world that uh, doesn't give them really the, the, the deeper desires of their heart. What, what does a prayer like that look like? Like to, to raise the bottom, what is, mm -hmm. uh, you just, Pray, kind of like what you just said, uh, like, you know, may 
they may they grow dissatisfied with mm-hmm. that life or i don't know what like what yeah it's interesting because we uh part of our vocation is interceding right um mm-hmm. and i honestly it'd be to talk about intercession is a good thing because how do we intercede for people how as priests do we offer sacrifice for people um, i mean like i think of augustine's prayer like shatter shatter the deafness right lord right now in this person's life shatter the deafness shat like breakthrough bring clarity and um Recently, a couple days ago, somebody reminded me that we can pray to ask people's guardian angel to do things. And I was like, oh, okay. yeah. hey, guardian angel so-and-so, can you please help us? <laughs> <laughs> but it's true, right? I mean, we believe, we believe in the power of, of the angels. We believe in intercessor, and intercessors. We believe in the saints. I mean, who knows who was praying for him to meet people along the way, to have a powerful confession. Like, how does that work? How does that grace work? That is God's providence in prayer, but also in, in, in who he brings us in our lives to help us experience grace. And his, his, converse, his conversion happened, I mean, it was over a long period of time, but he had an, an amazing, powerful conversation with somebody and he was ready to receive a grace there. Mm-hmm. And so what happened there? Like to be on the other side of that and be like, something happened in that conversation where he went home and then he realized like, whoa, like, I, and he, to, to cry out and to, to, to make a prayer, a sincere prayer to, to God himself, that's, that's big time grace. I could tell a story about Wojtek and how grace was working in his life, but it's, it's pretty raw. <laughs> um, the, so I was speaking to him just a one-on-one because, you know, I, I've, I've been, Thanks be to God, you know, one of the many priests who, who, who've been walking with him. Um, and uh, he told me one day, I love how Polish are just like so blunt. Like they tell you what they really think. He, he told me, Father, I do not know why, but sometimes I look at you and I, I don't like you. I'm like, <laughs> okay. That's never happened here. Yeah, all right. Like, I was like, I got, admittedly, what, I was just what like. What are you supposed to say to that? <laughs> uh, okay, okay. I was just like, okay. Um, <laughs> And I said, okay, well, do you know, talk about, I was receiving grace right there. I didn't get like all like bronc. I'm like, excuse me, did you know? No, it was just, well, why? Do you know why? And he said, I don't know. Well, ask the Lord to reveal to you why. Is it something I did? No, well, ask the Lord to reveal. And so a couple weeks later, he comes up to me and he says, Father, I asked the Lord to reveal to me and he did. Okay. <laughs> You're like, all right, I'm ready do, for this. Do, do, do <laughs> and he told me it was, it, was, it was beautiful. He said, when I was a, a boy, my father would work all the time. And my uncle would take care of us. And he's just like you. He's very enthusiastic. He's always making us laugh. And I was like, okay, that's good. Um, and he said, and one day we were misbehaving. And my mom told my uncle to go tell us to, 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 to behave. And my uncle said this, he said, you better behave or I will not love you anymore. Mm. And he said, and I realize now that that was a wound and it came up when I saw you. And I was like, praise God. Yeah. Praise God. That's, that's some serious grace right there. Amen. Amen. So grace is at work. Amen. And grace is going to continue to be at work. I, I just love hearing a big yeah. Manly man say, chastity changed my life. You know, like, isn't that awesome? You put that everywhere. Yeah, man. You know, poster board. Um, because he gets the truth. He gets the beauty. He, he realizes that it's not just about, like, not doing certain things, but it, it saved him, right? It, it prepared him for his vocation. It, it was an invitation to live the truth about himself and the gift of it being in a relationship, but it was something that was attractive. So here's a question. How is chastity manly? How is chastity manly? I mean, well, let me tell you, because you got to be a real man. <laughs> I was going to say, we take, I mean, vows, we take vows of chastity. Because he's, manly. he's living it. He's living yeah. it, and our, we live it, and, and everybody's called to live it. But he, the way he lives it, other men can be attracted mm-hmm. to. The perception is, is that men, in order to be a man, you must have uh, sexual um, conquests. Like, that is the perception of manly. And in fact, that is the definition of of weakness, and that's the def- actually the definition of a slave, because there's some a lot of people who can't stop living that way, that mm-hmm. slavery. So a, a man is a man who's in full possession of himself. For him to say that no matter what a girl might want to do, to say, no, I know who I am, and I would, I'm not gonna disrespect your dignity, even if you're not aware of your dignity, 
And so now, no, you know, you're not married. I'm, I'm, I'm not married to you. And like, that's a real man. Yeah. Um, and that's and attractive. I mean, that, that, that is attractive. And I think so many people need um, that example. I mean, and he, him and so many young men we work with, I mean, we, we see God working in their lives. And these men are, are such witnesses to, to this culture. Um, some of you guys are familiar with this. I share with the ladies that uh, you need to look for a man who's fat, <laughs> who's big. Um, look for a man who's big and fat. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> F-A-T-B-I-G Faithful Because if he is not looking to the Lord um, I say this as well I've heard I said this a thousand times Ladies, if he don't kneel Is no deal That's right. But I'm not talking about kneeling when he's proposing. I'm talking about when he goes into church and shows reverence for the body of Christ. Because if he doesn't show reverence to the body of Christ, how is he going to reverence your body? <laughs> F, faith. A, available. You spend time with the people that you love. Does he make himself available? Not just to you, because it's not all about you, ladies. Sorry. <laughs> But he makes himself available to people. He makes himself available to the Lord. Um, this availability is a, a sign of a capacity to love. Uh, teachable. So is he learning that in your conversations? Like, you know, like I'm, I'm learning more about myself through this relationship. I learned something else about my, do you see a learnability in him? And B-I-G, brave, um, inspiring and generous. A, a man who is brave stands up for what is right, speaks for those who don't have a voice, and in a way that's beautiful and charitable, points out what is going wrong. Uh, inspirational. Do you feel inspired by him? Do you feel like, wow, you know, like he really makes me want to love God more. Wow, he makes me want to like, you know, be better. Inspiration is a sign of God's presence there. And generosity. Um, that he is not just thinking of himself, but he sees his life as a gift for you and for everyone. That's what I would say to that question. Look for a guy who's big and fat. <laughs> we don't understand how sexual relations before marriage really affects the discernment. Mm. Um, and we don't realize how much we're bringing to uh, a marriage. Those who are getting married, I work with a number of couples who, who are doing this. And when that is not there, they're able to really work on their, their, their inner working so that they can enter into a lifelong relationship, which it takes, it takes a lot. No, it takes everything. everything. And if you're not coming with, if you're not able to have your everything together, then it's going to be difficult. There's going to be a lot of suffering. And as we know, a lot of couples, they throw in the towel. So this allows that the, the working that the Holy Spirit wants to do in your heart to be able to work on this thing, incredibly necessary. The church's uh, double, doubles down on this necessity of the sacrament. And it's funny, it's not complicated. If it's not a sacrament, um, if, it's, if it's without God, and if it's contrary to God, it doesn't work. Apart from Him, it's, it's not us. It's a complete gift of grace. And it... it in every, every vocation, in every way of life. And, and we, we talk about St. Francis all the time too. He experienced God as a gift of grace being poured out in his life continually and continually. Wojtek is experiencing this grace and, and often couples experience the opposite of it. But he let that grace overpower him. And, and now he's moving on in the future, going to get married and going to bear fruit. And, and yeah, it's such an amazing kind of like strong, again, like we said, masculine witness. And speaking of manliness, here's a man who felt a call, Abraham S, to leave his, his, <laughs> homeland. his homeland. We had everything set, and, and he asked God why. And then coming over here to the U.S., he saw her. <laughs> he understood. And there she was. And there she was. <laughs> Simmering in the sunset. Um, and, and he literally left everything uh, to, to seek out his beloved. 
Mm. That's manly. This is manly. That's manly. <laughs> Come on. Knowing Wojtek, if he, if that grace wasn't there, he wouldn't do it. Man, like that's how right. faithful that's how faithful he would be. The grace is real, and I'm faithful to the grace that's there. And if it's not there, I'm not doing it. It's not worth it. To to know that God's blessing is there, um, I, I feel that there's a longing in young people. Uh, for this knowledge like I need to know that I have my father's blessing we might fight it and we might say like no 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 I'm good I'm my own person <laughs> you know like I do what I want and stuff but deep down we are longing for our father's blessing um, and I know uh, Wojtek and Ideal are longing for without that it just doesn't work a Missionary Millennial Marriage. Ooh. Come on. Say again, say again. Was that Missionary <laughs> Millennial <laughs> Marriage. That's what we need. That's what we need. Full of grace. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you for the gift of our lives, the gift of our vocations. We thank you that you have a call for each one of us. We do pray now, Lord, in a special way for all those young people you have called to marriage, the beauty of marriage, the beauty of that covenant. We pray for Wojtek and Ideal. We pray for all young people who long to be faithful, that you would just give them the grace that they need. Would you just shower down upon them the graces of chastity, of purity of heart, of deep desires to be saints. May this very moment they know the depths of your love and mercy. And we just ask for the gift of fidelity, for faithfulness to what you desire. May Almighty God bless us and all who are watching in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. <laughs> Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. Never leave the Catholic Church, whatever happened. Like, I can even say that I beg you out there, whatever happened, do not leave the Catholic Church, because Catholic Church is so beautiful, is so awesome, despite whatever is happening, even right now, whatever happened, you know, in the past of the history of the Church. This is the body of the Christ and all the richness of life, all the awesomeness that you can find, you're gonna find it only in Catholic Church, in communion with brothers and sisters, in Catholic community, um, with priests, with holy priests. Do not leave the Catholic Church because Catholic Church is like a boat when, when, when you can like hide and, and, and survive the storm because it's not gonna be better out there in the world, you know? Try to look for support, there are so many like, you know, holy priests out there that are willing to help because me, I would never get out from oppression that I was in, you know, um, having serious spiritual problems that I was have to go to exorcist for many years to get unbounded from the demonic possession. So I know that the true freedom, that the true help for like spiritual life, that also like after that imposed on the, the earthly life, it's only through the Catholic Church. How you doing? Father Augustino here, just getting back from Panama. Went literally from the frying pan into the crazy cold weather, bundling up. But don't worry, we are going to be showing you guys a couple, couple of the incredible things that, that have already happened. And then in a couple weeks, we're going to show you some stuff on location in Haiti. Welcome to Haiti 2019. In Lourdes, let's see what else we can cook up, okay? So don't go anywhere. We will be seeing you. Thank you for tuning in to Icons on EWTN. God bless you. Peace.